Hello everyone. All right, so the sun is setting. It is absolutely a gorgeous sunset tonight and it's setting on a very busy weekend for me. I have been amending beds, remulching, working on some irrigation, and I've been transplanting a lot. Um, I have some seeds that have started, some seeds that have been going a while, and I've really been working on some of my containers. So that's what I want to talk about. We're doing a lot more container gardening, and um, if you're new to containers, then I have a few tips for you to make you more successful at that. So a couple of things to consider when you're going to be growing in containers. One is the size of your container. You want to make sure that whatever you want to grow, you're growing it in the right size. So first I would make a list of fruits, vegetables, flowers, herbs, things you want to grow. And then I would look at what their needs are as far as depth. So what is their root system? How much um, space does that root system need? You also want to look at the spread of the roots, but the spread of the plant itself. So you want to look at height and you want to look at width for your containers. Really, really important. Kellogg Garden has a container gardening guide. The link will be in the description and you can go through that. It's got some phenomenal tips on container gardening, but it will talk about some of the different things like lettuces, uh, your greens that don't need a really deep container, um, as opposed to say tomatoes, especially your larger, beefier tomatoes that might need 24 inches um, to grow in. So size first. Next is material. Think about the material that you're gonna grow in. Like this one is a felt pot. Love growing in felt. Uh, it's got some handles, it's pretty large, lots of airflow, great material to grow in. These are metal. Um, this one is a newer pot, but it is painted. So that's something to consider. Um, if you were upcycling something that were that was pretty old, then you might have to worry about lead in the paint. But I'm not growing anything edible in it right now, so I'm not as worried about it. That is a great metal pot to grow in. Um, it can get a little bit of rust on it. I'm not worried about that. Even if I were growing an edible, it would be down at the bottom and rust doesn't really affect you. Um, but it is, again, something to consider. Now, if you're growing in, say, plastics, something darker, uh, it could heat up. I have a, a metal raised uh, container in the back that's black, um, and I've tested it a few times, and it doesn't really heat up, so that's nice. If you're growing in plastic, also, it might not be very breathable, so that's something to consider. Terracotta can be great. It is breathable, not as breathable as this, but... Um, and it doesn't heat up. So really look at the different material uh, of the containers you want to grow in. Next thing to think about is drainage. So now this um, is just naturally, this felt pot is naturally going to drain. Uh, so that's phenomenal. Now these didn't have drainage in them, so we drilled some drainage holes. You just don't want your roots to sit in uh, really wet conditions. You can get root rot and have other problems, so you want to make sure that it drains. Um, so drainage is really important, and we only drain. Uh, we only drilled one hole in each of these, and then two holes in that one. So I'm going to keep an eye on it in case I need uh, a little bit more drainage. They're pretty tall. So this one is about 14 inches, this one's about 16, that one's 20 inches. So I'll just need to keep an eye on it um, and, and check on that drainage. Now the other thing of course that affects drainage is your soil. So using the proper soil for your containers is really, really important. Um, a potting mix or a raised bed mix has been cultivated to have great drainage, the right nutrients, and the right pH for growing your fruits and vegetables, uh, herbs, and flowers. If you were to take native soil and put it in a container, it's going to compress, it's going to get compacted, it's not going to have that drainage. So be very careful about doing that. Now in this pot, it's it's pretty deep and pretty wide, it's 20 inches wide. So I've got some raised bed soil in the bottom and then I've got some potting soil at the um, on the top. I could have put all raised bed in this and been fine now. Of course, 
I mix other things in like my worm castings. Um, I also put um, granular fertilizer mixed into the layers. So it's a slow release organic fertilizer. So over time, we'll add more nutrients back in um, and then my composted manure. So um, these babies are going to be phenomenal <laughs> this season. All right. Uh, and the, the other thing uh, to remember in your containers is that you still want to mulch. Mulching isn't just for ground gardening or for raised bed gardening. You want to mulch your containers as well. Um, one, it'll help retain moisture, really important. It can also uh, help with temperature control and it can help with pests. So right now, I just got these planted and they'll be mulched next. Now, watering in containers is a little bit different than say that raised bed. So in-ground um, watering, moisture lasts longer. Then raised beds would be next. The moisture and the water doesn't last as long. And then these guys dry out the fastest, right? Especially this one because there's lots of airflow. So you are going to water more often on, on these. And in container gardening, especially if you have a lot of containers, then that can be a lot of work, making sure that you go out there and you regularly water all the containers. So that uh, raised bed there has a drip irrigation system in it and the line runs behind here. So I'm just gonna tap into those lines. I'm gonna put some little uh, bubblers or little drip irrigation into each one of these so I can water the whole thing at the same time. So I'll have a video on that and how I do it. Um, it's just a basic setup and then it's got a little um, timer uh, on it. So pretty easy to do and I'll let you guys know how I do that. So that's, that's pretty much it. Size, material, drainage, um, soil, watering. And you know what? The last one I would say is companion planting. Now you can companion plant with your planters, with your containers, or even inside of a container. So don't forget about companion planting. I've got my flowers here and that's to bring in my pollinators and it's going to help that raised bed and this container. And in this container, I've got strawberries, peas, and I've got some lettuce. Um, my strawberries can grow over the side. My peas are going to grow up this nice little teepee. And then my lettuce is going to grow in the center. And it'll probably end up that the lettuce will get spent first. And then I can replant something uh, there later. Or I can just add more strawberries. Or maybe my strawberries spread by then and I don't need something in the, in the center. You just want to make sure that when you space your plants, that you space them properly. Do they need three inches, six, eight, 12 inches apart? Um, sometimes I put mine a little bit close and uh, you wanna be careful with that because if you can't get good airflow, you could have problems with disease like powdery mildew or with pests because you can't see them and they kind of hide in there. So be careful on that. But companion planting is so important. You can bring in your pollinators, you can help deter pests, and of course, it just all looks beautiful as it's all blooming together. So um, that would be the last thing I would consider is how to make sure that you're companion planting really well. So I think that's it. I have a busy week ahead, so you'll probably see some more videos coming out. At the end of this video, I'm going to pop in Evan um, giving some advice and doing some drilling for me because he's putting in some drainage holes for me. So he'll tell you what he used, what bit he used, what tools he used, and then his techniques on how he got that done. So thanks again for joining me. I will see you guys again soon. Happy gardening. So I'm using a quarter inch impact to drill the holes. Impacts are a little easier to drill holes, unlike a drill where it can catch, kind of, you know, twist your wrist. I also when the drill is slow, when you're drilling through metal, it's a little better to go slow. Just, it would just burn up the bit, it heats up a lot. We'll just give it a little wobble so in case it does grab, the hole's a little bit bigger. Drip your hand. Three 
this metal or bimetal bit um, to drill the hole. I recommend going slower when you do it, a slower speed. Um, most drills and impacts these days have the trigger, um, basically the, the more you pull it in, the faster it goes. So I just pull it in a little bit to kind of get a slower speed that and wobble it just slightly that way in case uh, it does all of a sudden catch, it won't just kind of jerk your hand. An impact's better to use because you won't get as much of that jerk as you would with the drill. But not everybody has a, an impact driver. Um, a drill will work, but same, same technique, wobble it a little bit, go slow, slow speed. Thank you. 